Okay guys, we're gonna do a weak point training video on back today. Back to me is kind of like training chest, kind of training legs. It's just a specific tension to detail, whether it's, it's how you're stretching the muscle, you contract, your release, but there also has to be uh, a certain understanding of how much weight you use, how much stress you put on the area, how much overloading of the area. Your back is, is built a lot like your legs. It can carry so much weight. Remember, when you're squatting, you're deadlifting, you put four or five, six hundred pounds in the bar, your lower back and it's your middle back supports all that weight. So if you're just coming in the gym and you're, you're just doing light pull downs and light bent over rows, you're not going to grow and stretch your back. You have to overload that area with stress. Remember, it's not about doing weights, it's not about doing reps, it's time under tension. So you want to put as much stress in that area as you can, and the body has no result but to grow as compensation. You know, if when, when you burn yourself on the stove, what does your skin do to protect that area? It swells up. It's similar with muscle groups. When you put stress constantly over and over and over on a muscle group, it has to grow. It has to grow to compensate for that stress. So we're gonna put some stress on muscles today. First thing we're gonna talk about is how do we build the back? How do we widen our back, develop our back? It's like working your chest. We're gonna work from the top down from the outside in. Just like you know, you wouldn't come into the gym and work your chest, you wouldn't start in the middle of your chest. You start in the upper chest. That's the widest part of the pectoral. Same with the back. We're gonna start on the outside, top of the back, and work our way down. First exercise, lat pull downs. Wide grip, super wide grip lat pull downs. Okay, it's important getting a full stretch. See so many guys come in the gym, and you know, they first of all, they're gripping it in here, they're trying to get full grip, and they're coming down to half ass and they're not coming all the way up. You're not doing anything. You're just fucking wasting your time because you're not getting a full stretch. You've got to pull the muscle fibers apart. You have to stretch muscle fascia for it to grow, especially if you're naturally trained. If you guys aren't naturally trained, get the fuck off this video because you know I don't want you to. So we're going to do it right. We're going to work hard, but you have to pay attention to detail. And the detail is stretching the muscle group. It's contracting release. It's not just moving a bunch of fucking weight. That's being a meat. That's a weekend warrior. Do things the right way. You'll see proper results. Okay. That's what happens when you have too many uh, scoops of pre-workout. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do the first one is really, really wide here, okay? You want to get your hips underneath. You don't want to be leaning back like this. Get your hips underneath you. And we want to leave with our elbows behind us. So squeeze behind us. Now, see a lot of people in the gym, especially females, when they pull down, they tend to cower. They tend to bring their shoulders forward and then pull down to their chest like this. That's not going to be working your upper back. It's not widening your legs. Once you start to come forward with your shoulder and your shoulders hunch, you're putting stress on your shoulders and your delts, and you're going to put stress on your rotator cuffs. You don't want that. We want to keep a big chest. We want to come down, we're going to pull our head back, come down right below our chin, and we want to squeeze our upper back. Squeeze, think of, think of bring your elbows behind you and squeezing everything. You want to squeeze from your rear delts into your upper lats, into your traps, into your rhomboids. Do that tightly in every area, and then you get that full tight squeeze, and then you release it. That's how you can put in the muscle, in and out, in and out. Contract and release is how you grow. Well done, sir. Now slide our hips in, get close, head back, we'll squeeze. It almost like all the way up, as I come up and I pull my body for a little bit, I'm not swinging, but I am getting a full stretch by letting it pull my lats apart. We'll squeeze. There is a difference between coming back like this and coming up and letting the weight pull my lats apart. That's what you want. Get a full stretch. When you do bent over rows, same thing. We don't want to swing back and forth, but it's okay at the bottom to come forward and let it pull your lats apart. That's what we want. Now let's talk about rep range. I'm going to teach you guys what's called a high-low set. I do this a lot, back exercises, especially lat pull downs. It's a great way to build mass, but also condition the muscle and, and, and really detail an area at the same time. Let's be honest. Who has fucking time in their life other than bodybuilders to bulk up and cut down? And you know how I feel about bulking anyway. It's all pure bullshit unless you're on juice. So we want to we want to strengthen the muscle. We want to grow the muscle. But we want to be conditioned. We want to look good year round. You don't want one of these fitness fucking fakers that isn't doing things properly and they're out of shape. So high low set. Okay, here we go. High weight. Five, six reps. Mass building, strengthening set. Immediate drop set. You know, cut, cut 100 pounds off the weight of 50 pounds. 10 to 12 reps to condition. So I'll demonstrate. Uh, Now on these, 
We're really trying to maximize, and I'm taking a quick break, but this will be instantaneous. But it would be instant drop set. We're going to do like half to three quarter reps. You're really just focusing on the squeeze of the upper back. Really depleting that muscle, getting all the blood in that. This is how you get a really, really good pump. And we want to keep that pump as long as you can. Remember, it's all about, like in the olden days when they would form, when they would create the fires to forge the steel, you want to get the fire as hot as you can. You don't just, you know, stick the, the piece of steel on the fire and pull it out. You get that motherfucker in there as hot as you can. The hotter it is, the harder the steel. It's the same thing when you lift weights. Once you get that pump in your muscle, once you get that stress, that tension, you keep going as long as you can. You don't quit when it hurts. That's when the growth happens. Okay, so let's pretend I wasn't taking a break and talking. So now go right into, uh, squeeze. Notice I'm not coming all the way up now. I'm still getting a stretch in my lats, I'm just not getting a full release. High low set. Five, six, seven reps. Immediate drop set, no rest, 10 to 12 reps. Minute rest, we're gonna do this for three or four sets. So it comes out to be six to eight sets total. First exercise, on number two. Okay, second exercise. A little different exercise, maybe some of you guys have done this, not sure, but it's called a typewriter. Kind of like doing a chin up, but again, focusing on outer back to the inside, squeeze and contract. So regular chin up bar, again, wide grip. We're gonna pull ourselves up, and like a typewriter, we're gonna go right, left. But you wanna hold, hold, release, come back up, and then go left. So we're looking to get six, seven reps each side. I'm telling you guys, it's exhausting. You know, don't be afraid if you're a first timer, do, do the assisted ones, you know? I'm, I'm a big dude and I'm a little fat right now, so I sometimes gotta do assisted. There's a lot of weight to pull up. That's what happens if you have too many breakfast sandwiches. Okay, so tight breath, ready? Up, cross, down. Back up. Okay, typewriters, five, six, seven reps each side, minute rest, three, four sets total. After doing the high-low sets, upper back is gonna be screaming. It's exercise two, on number three. Okay, on exercise number three. Now, I should say this at the beginning. Everybody should have these, lifting wraps. It's not for sissies, these aren't gloves, there's a big difference. When you lift weights, your back is so strong, like I talked at the beginning, you can carry such a load in your back like your legs, you need to have reps. I don't care who you are, your forearms are going to give out before your back does. And if they don't, you're spending too much time at home with your forearms, not enough on your back, okay? So, you really need reps. How do we use reps properly? So come in close and show you guys. A lot of people do these wrong. When you put the wraps on, they should come through and it should separate pinky and index finger. So, like these ones, see the name is upright on the right side? The left one, for it to fit right, is going to have to be upside down. See how it comes through like this and flush? If it's coming this way, it's wrong. So we want to split it right here. Now how do we wrap to a bar? A lot of people come in, they just wrap it around the bar like this. It's not doing anything. You want to wrap the bar to your hand. See how I have the bar in between? Wrap and then rotate it in. Now I'm locked in. I can basically, I can lift with just my thumb, locking this in. Thumb and index finger, look at it. It's locked in. If you wrap, in with the bar not in between, all you're doing is making your grip thicker and you're not being any stronger. Work, help yourself out. Use wraps the right way. Okay, now we're gonna talk bent over rows. Bent over, over rows to me is probably one of the exercises that's done worse in the gym. People screw it up the most. It's no different than doing lat pull downs. A good tip for training doing lat pull down or for doing bent over rows or T-bar rows, you wanna hunch your shoulders down at the bottom. Let that weight pull your shoulders and your back apart to get that stretch. So lighten the weight, let it pull you down, and then come back and then contract. I mean, to be honest guys, most people are, you know, the train bag or pretty we could all put three, 400 pounds on here and do crappy reps. Like I said, you use shitty form, you're gonna have shitty muscles. Don't have shitty muscles, okay? So we're gonna get a little bit wider in shoulder width. Grip. I'm gonna get a body position 
close to 90 degrees, but not quite. So stick the butt out. Now look, see I'm almost touching the ground, but I'm letting my it's letting it pull my shoulders down. So I'm stretching my back and then squeeze. Don't be like this, guys. Don't be like this. It's a different exercise that we would do underhand. Right, squeeze. Three, four sets, 10 to 12 reps. Lighten the weight up. Focus on the contraction, okay? We want to stretch that outer lat, pull back. Now as we're pulling back, we're working on outer lat, we're stretching, but then as we pull back and squeeze with good form, we start tying the middle of the back. Now, there's a different type of bent row. Underhand grip, heavier weight. You can pull more weight this way. This is gonna work strictly towards the middle of the back. A little narrower grip. Now look, see we're underhand, right? Put a lot more weight on the bar. Now, less of a body lean. Pull. We're gonna work to work on our traps. Middle of our back, even some of our lower back. Like that. Have your exercise. Six, eight, maybe ten reps. I wouldn't say super set them. You're gonna be exhausted, but overhand grip, widening the lats, hunching the shoulders to the bottom, stretching apart, or if you're using a T-bar row, same concept. Let the weight pull you down. Especially women, you want to widen your shoulders, get a nice little taper. Use the weight to your advantage to pull muscle fibers apart. Help stretch or widen that area. It's gonna make your waist look smaller. I'm pretty sure it's what we all want. As always guys, joeydfitness.com for all my videos, over 200 videos now, daily workouts, nutrition plans. Keep sending your questions and emails. Um, you know, the dumb questions and dumb comments. But as always, I'm gonna call you out on Facebook or whatever. You write something stupid, you deserve a stupid answer. So, but for the most part, most of your questions have been pretty good. Keep sending them in, I'll keep making videos. Catch you next time.